Greetings and welcome to another edition of The Pedal Shift Project. The Pedal Shift Project is a series of conversations, thoughts, and experiments around the bike touring lifestyle. From tips and tricks to ideas on how to ride your ride, let's shrink the world by bike. Show notes and more are available at pedalshift.net, and you can email the show at pedalshift at pedalshift.net, and check Pedal Shift out also on all the socials as well. Good morning. Good Tuesday morning. Tuesday morning. This would be uh, day four. Saturday was day one. Saturday was day two. Yesterday, Monday, day three. Today, Tuesday, day four. Um, I am behind today, as you all know. But I'm going to make it up. Um, I am currently standing in the Foghorn Theater here at beautiful South Beach State Park, which has hosted me for two nights. And that has just been fantastic. I love this place. It is uh, just fantastic. I just love it here. And I'm really grateful that I got to do two nights here. It felt good. Um, but I think it's time I started doing some actual bicycling of note. So that is what's going to happen today. Uh, this morning, I am going to start my morning by going over the Yaquina Bay and the Yaquina Bay Bridge, go back north into Newport, hopefully before the nor- the northerly winds start howling like they have been the last couple of days, although I would like them to come back soon. Um, and I'm going to, I've got plenty of time this morning. I got up at, I went to bed very early last night, like even before the sun went down and I got up shortly after the sun came up. It was a little bit of a little bit after 5.30 when I got up, which is insanely early for me, but I had had plenty of sleep and made a cup of coffee, very casually packed up and uh, took care of uh, all the business that one needs to take care of in the morning. And then uh, it's about 7 a.m. right now and I am about ready to head over that bridge. So I got plenty of time. Bike shop opens at 10 a.m. Bus leaves at 10.20 a.m. I need to decide whether or not they are too far apart to be able to pull off what I'm toying with doing. Did I mention this in the last episode? I may have. Not sure. I'll repeat myself then. The uh, plan at this point, I think, is grab a chain, grab a mirror, if they've got one, and do that in five minutes or less. Um, And I'm kind of hoping that they're actually there a little bit early so that I can do this Um, and definitely make sure I make that 10, 20 a.m. bus. If I miss that bus, it it, it just throws everything off. It makes, it, it makes my plan to, uh, my, my plan that I'm about to continue to tell you kind of fall apart and I would have to, uh, play catch up over two days instead of one. And I'd be sitting around Newport forever and it would just drive me crazy. So, uh, this is what I'll be doing. I'll be, um, uh, uh, grabbing that 10, 20 a.m. bus and I will get to Yahats. Yahats, I'll grab another bus, and I'll be in um, uh, Florence. I'll be in Florence by about 12.15. I know I've I've mentioned this, okay? This is all to repeat. I apologize. Uh, But it's a new episode, and it's a new week for you. Um, And I will then ride, and I will do what should have been my ride today. Last night, under my old schedule, I was staying just outside of Florence. And uh, in the uh, Honeyman uh, State Park campground. Um, so basically what I'll do is I'm going to be doing what I never do, a late time shifted full day ride. Uh, so I'll be arriving in uh, uh, Reeds, excuse me, not Reedsport, in um, uh, North Bend um, and potentially Sunset Bay, depending on how I'm feeling, um, later than normal, closer to maybe sunset. Uh, and I'm hoping to get there uh, with plenty of time to be able to set up. Um, there are some other lodging options potentially for me in the area. So I'm going to play all of that by ear. Um, I'm just really hopeful that uh, this layoff uh, is uh, was a good thing rather than a bad thing for me. All right. Hopping on the bike and going to grab some, I think, pancakes or something like that at the good old Pig and Pancake, the uh, breakfast stop that was torn away from me in Lincoln City because of, well, all of this. So I I do get my Pig and Pancake, which makes me happy. More to come. Sitting outside Bike Newport here in beautiful Newport, Oregon. And uh, what a nice little setup they've got uh, for... I know that this probably isn't for people like me who are waiting for them to open, but uh, 
beautiful Adirondack chairs out front here. Uh, most importantly, a nice little ramp to get your bike up rather than steps that you have to kind of haul stuff up. It's This place is sort of made for uh, the bike tourist. And of course, they've got laundry facilities here. They've got all sorts of other things. This is uh, one of the best bike touring shops in the country and uh, I'm glad I'm at least going to be able to be here for a few minutes when they're open because as I've mentioned before uh, I'm typically here on either Sundays or Mondays and no dice man they're closed <laughs> they're they're off biking themselves I think so good for them so yeah we're gonna uh, hopefully I, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping hoping maybe that uh, whoever's whoever's staffing the open here is uh, gets here a little bit early so I can kind of uh, uh, get in and out really quickly I'm uh, I'm, I'm five minute bike ride away from the bus stop so i should have plenty of time but you know how this these things go by this i gotta ride over there then i gotta pull all my stuff off the bike and then i get there's just there's just a few things that need to happen now granted if i'm sitting right there the bus is not going to pull away from me but still um i i i have this uh interesting mental condition about um over preparation for travel, which is why I'm sitting here getting a spare eight speed bike chain, <laughs> you know, just in case. Uh, I think that that will be a really, really good idea when all is said and done. Um, and maybe I can get a mirror too. Maybe not. If not, so be it. I've been riding without one, but I would really like one for the rest of the ride, even if it's something I have to hack together with duct tape and a prayer. So. <laughs> All right, uh, more to come. And um, oh, interesting. Somebody looks like another person who's a bike tourist who might be coming this direction. I guess we'll see. More to come. Well, the folks who were uh, opening today uh, had traffic or some other things. Um, so they did not get there by 10. And that's when a line started to form and there was a lot of stuff going on. Uh, but I just figured by the time that, they, you know, if someone came, even if it was just a few minutes after 10, they'd have to open up, they'd have to unlock, they'd have to turn on their point of service stuff. I figured there was no real way that I would be able to get it. So I have decided to go with my existing setup, my existing chain, and just uh, just hope for good things uh, for basically the rest of the ride. And uh, yeah, it's been riding great and I'm feeling pretty good about it. So we'll just have to see how that goes. Uh, bus is, let's see, this is an East County bus, so that's not what I want. Um, it also, it saves me four hours to go now. And I think I'd rather do that. And um, time will tell. The rest of this series will tell whether this was a good or a bad idea. We'll see. Good afternoon from Florence, Oregon. Florence is not quite as busy as Lincoln City, but it's pretty trafficy, so I'm very much looking forward to getting through here. And on my way to Reedsport and beyond. The buses went just great. There was uh, uh, an accident, a uh, pretty substantial accident between uh, Yahats, or excuse me, uh, right before Yahats, uh, between Newport and Yahats. And, uh, but we got through that, no problem. Felt grateful perhaps that I wasn't riding my bicycle through there, particularly when that happened. So that was good. Um, found out a little bit more about the bus that goes from here in Florence down uh, either to Eugene or out and down through Reedsport into Coos Bay. So there is a bus and it is janky uh, by all accounts. However, it runs Mondays and Tuesdays and Thursdays and Fridays. There are two a day. I could have caught it if I wanted, but Darn it, I need to ride instead of taking buses. Um, and as of the moment, in a few miles, and apologies for the wind, I hope this isn't garbage uh, podcast quality uh, as I come to a stop here. 
uh, when I get to Honeyman State Park in a moment or, or a, mile, a few miles, I, I would say, uh, that would be where I would have, if I was on schedule, started my morning. And I probably would have left somewhere in the, I don't know, 8 o'clock hour is what I'm guessing. So I'm probably about four hours behind where I would normally be. Uh, give or take. And I could have made that up by taking the bus to Reedsport, perhaps. But really, my big thing at this point is I want to make sure that I am able to get where I need to go safely and uh, end my day at wherever I'm going to lay my head down in a place of... Uh, where, with the sun still up. That's, that's my goal. And... That fast forward I just did made up for all of the lost time. Uh, I realized, and again, sorry for the wind here, I realized that the <clears throat> lack of riding the last few days is kind of comical. I think I've ridden maybe a total of 50 miles so far, and I'm all the way down in Florence. So it's time to start riding again. And uh, thanking the buses for being there, but... Uh, only using them as necessary. I will say, I very much enjoyed my stay in Newport. I'm a little bummed that <clears throat> really when all was said and done, I could have fixed this myself and kept going really on the same day. Um, I didn't need to fast forward when all was said and done. Um, and I'm proceeding without having hit the bike shop. So I don't even have a spare chain should there be anything wrong. That said, man, everything is behaving very, very well right now. And because of that, I feel like, you know what, I'm just going to have to put my trust into my skills, as limited as they may be, and uh, not ride this with abandon, you know, ride this, ride this smart. Um, which I think I can definitely do. I don't think that I'm that insane. Um, I do wish that I had a mirror. That's certainly something that is no good, especially now as I get on this on this bridge here. I could be on the sidewalk, but why be on the sidewalk when I can ride over broken glass? I guess this seems to be a bad idea. This is the bridge leaving Florence. Beautiful, beautiful views. Uh, sand dunes are a big feature around here. I heard a siren behind me, but I have no, <clears throat> no mirror to check out what that it was. I have been passed, so. And there were sharrows, so. And across the bridge. Well, that worked well. I think I'm wearing too many layers, so I think I may, may end this report here while I de-layer. But, uh, I guess when all is said and done, now that I know about the bus that connects here south, um, it's good to know because honestly, I'm probably, of if, if you wanted picturesque riding, uh, I just bust through the picturesque part of the day and I've got the less picturesque part coming up. So if I had flipped things around and ridden and then grabbed the 530 bus, that would have been fine. But I didn't have any real sense of what was going on with that until after I spoke with that driver. So uh, their website's garbage. <laughs> they have no phone numbers. It just, just isn't a great thing. So you, you take what you get with the info that you have. And based on the info that I've had, I'm feeling okay with things. Could I have done things differently? Oh yeah, absolutely. But you know what? I'm riding a gun, that's great. All right, delayering a little bit and riding to Reedsport. Next stop, a couple hours, 20 miles, 22 miles, give or take. 
See you there. From Reedsport, Oregon. Took a briefer than typical break, because it is after three o'clock. And I still want to leave open the possibility that I'm going to go to Sunset Bay Campground tonight. I really have a couple of minds on this, but uh, let me start off with the ride so far. It's been great. The bike, <coughs> this bike rides better now than I think I've ever ridden it after any bike mechanic has touched it. Therefore, I am the greatest bike mechanic of all time. I'm pausing for your laughter uh, because it's warranted. The uh, chain behaves, again, better than it has the entire time. I've been much smarter about the shifting, and I do think that that makes a real difference uh, when all of a sudden done not as much wear and tear. Apologies for all the pauses. This is a fairly congested uh, town, and I am used to going through here really early in the morning um, because typically this is about 18 or so miles outside of the campground that I stay at, Honeyman, and you know, I, it, it, it can be fairly early in the morning. Uh, you know, if I leave it, I've known to, I've been known to leave in the seven o'clock hour. So yeah, it's like could be just after nine at the latest often when I'm here. Uh, let's see. That didn't sound as good as I would have liked it. But I found that the gnarliest shift, and it's not that bad, is going to the lower chain ring when I'm a little too aggressive. And so as a result, when I've been going up hills like I'm doing right now, I've been much more circumspect about uh, doing it in succession rather than just kind of slamming it down as I've been wont to do back in the day. But I, I would say given the, oh, 22 or so miles that I've ridden this, and I've ridden it up some reasonable grades. You know, this isn't the hardest day left by any stretch, but it's not the easiest, um, flattest day. That'll probably be the last day uh, after one big climb. I think it's one big climb out of Gold Beach. Anyways, point being, <laughs> that's uh, I think I put it through its paces. And in retrospect, of course, what what I if I had known, if I could have gone back in time or listened to this podcast, you know, and known, yo, all you have to do is take two wrenches and twist that thing back uh, and you're fine you know most of the drama wouldn't have happened most of the last two episodes wouldn't have happened <laughs> which is fine uh, like I said that's bike touring but I do I do regret sort of the uh, rushing down to the bike shop and then <laughs> leaving without a chain you know I mean I suppose that that was uh worth doing given that I was going to take that bus anyways it's worth a shot so no hard feelings bike Newport uh, and thank you to all the buses that got me to be able to continue this ride which is really great so tonight uh, I've got 21 miles that includes pretty gnarly bridge the uh, bridge up to North Bend <clears throat> over Coos Bay is no small feat. It is uh, a big grade and there's no shoulder. There's kind of a sidewalk, but memory serves, it's not really worth bothering with. So it's a uh, take a break, have something to drink and then go from there. Interestingly, um, the winds have whipped around. Got a few headwinds here in the last few miles, and it just might be directional. It's also 10 degrees warmer here than it has been in other spots. Uh, it's 73, according to the Umpqua Bank, which I'm sure is the most accurate thermometer 
in the world. <clears throat> but ride's been going great. Bike's been behaving. I've been eating medi mediocrely. A lot of fries. A lot of fries and sugar-filled sodas. Um, I only have one water bottle, too, which is my fault. I only brought one water bottle thinking that I would get, like, a Gatorade. And I'm just never any place I want to get a Gatorade or want to make a special trip for one because it's always like, oh, I just have to go 20 miles. One bottle of water ought to do it. Which it should. Even at 73 degrees. I also cameled up quite a bit, so... But tonight, uh, I keep dancing around this, there is a reasonably priced hotel in North Bend that I'm toying with, which would make my ride today shorter and tomorrow longer. And so I, I'm just sort of kind of uh, playing a little bit by ear just because if I, uh, if I end up doing the mileage tomorrow, it makes for eh, a day that's on the range of things, for me at least, that's just on the edge of my comfort level when I'm in better bike shape. But the flip side of it is that I'll have more time to do it. Um, I don't know. You know how I am at these things. I always talk about all my options and back and forth, make a decision, then usually do the opposite at some point. I think you followed the podcast for long enough to know how I roll. Well, I'm about to enter into an area where there's a bit of a climb uh, that it's basically going up a big hill and then down to Winchester Bay. Beautiful, beautiful downhill for that. Uh, but I'm not going to subject you to my huffing and puffing up this thing. So we'll, we'll check in a little bit closer to the uh, Coos Bay Bridge and uh, North Bend. And I'll have to make a decision by then about what happened, what's happening with where I'm sleeping tonight. I'm trying to block the wind and failing. <laughs> I'm just outside of uh, North Bend, about to tackle the bridge. Uh, just slammed down a little bit of uh, Pop-Tart action and some water. Um, I am leaning towards the camp tonight rather than the hotel, uh, just so that tomorrow is uh, not as long of a day. It probably shaves about oh, seven, eight miles if I do it uh, uh, this way. But of course, it also means that I got 15 more miles to do today. But I'm feeling all right, so I think we're gonna go for it. And uh, if I do the math, if I carry the one, I should be there long before sunset. So Sunset Bay will not truly be after sunset. I hope they fix that that campground though. Oh man, ugh. Anyways, off I go. From North Bend, Oregon at the tried and true Safeway on the other side of town. Um, I decided to go for the campground um, option because the hotels were um, a little busy. There's doom days going on, uh, which is uh, a thing. Um, <laughs> and uh, not, not uh, definitely not my speed and not my game. So um, I think I'll be happier at the uh, campground. Um, I have I've been on record that this is not my favorite campground. Um, they had a, a wonderful hiker biker back in the day. They moved it. It was supposed to be temporary, but it was temporary years ago. And so I have no idea if temporary became permanent and they just kind of gave us a cruddy spot. And that's just how it is because there's very few decent places to put your tent down. So, but because there's so few people out, um, maybe that won't matter. Uh, I forgot to mention, this morning I ran into a guy who saw my hat and he goes, hey, did you go to Syracuse? And I was like, yeah. And he goes, oh, I'm from Rochester. And I'm like, really? I'm from, you know, we did the whole dance where we told each other which suburb we were eventually from. So that was kind of fun. Always fun to run into a Western New Yorker. So we will have one more dispatch from today at Sunset Bay State Park in a little bit, about nine miles from here, give or take. So it's about an hour. <sighs> Here we go. From the Hiker Biker Campsite at Sunset Bay State Park. It is the end of day four. And um, I made it, which is great. I need to figure out the total mileage, but I'm, th I'm thinking it was close to like 65 maybe when I was said and done. Or at least it was certainly 60. Um, 
good, good uh, riding day. Unfortunately, you know, Sunset Bay, uh, the the temporary. I, I'm I'm no longer going to say, oh, they said that this was temporary because it's very clear that this is the permanent setup. It is <laughs> underneath a. Uh, I don't know if you caught, you heard that, but there are pine cones that are dropping everywhere. So. First of all, the surface is just covered in them, so you've got that to deal with. Second of all, there's not a flat spot in this entire freaking campsite. It's just remarkable. I'm the only one here, which is probably for the best. Um, but I'm going to be uh, taking what appears to be the closest thing to flat here, which is fine. We'll make it work. Um, I, think I'll, I think I'm just going to kick some pine cones out of the way so that I have fewer uh, issues with surface. Um, one of the things in Newport that I never mentioned was, I think it was on top of a root or something like that that made it a little difficult to get into a good position. But of course, not, not so much that I moved the tent for the second night, lazing this one out. Here, however, I'm going to do everything I can to ameliorate the situation with the less than less than level spots. Yeah, I don't know who I need to talk to at the state of Oregon. It's just like, man, level this thing out. It actually wouldn't be so bad if, it, if there were level spots, but like you get, you get a bunch of people in here. It's just, eh. perhaps I should just get over it. <laughs> Let's just leave it at that. Um, I have a great dinner purchased from the Safeway, including a beer from Freem, which I'm very excited about. It's a Hood River, Oregon brewer that makes probably my favorite beers uh, in the world right now. And I know I'm not alone with that. Um, I had a Freem in Newport, uh, which was a nice surprise. And it's great to be able to have a second nice surprise here. I pretty much have a feast. I also had to get some food for, make sure that I had food for tomorrow as well, which I have secured um, now it's sort of like, what order do I want to do things? I have about an hour and a half of, of sun. I'm not so famished that I need to eat now, but I think that my best bet is to, uh, get the tent set up first and then maybe shower and then eat, um, since I'm not like dying of hunger, but, uh, light is an important thing. So I will work, work my light situation, have a gelato, bag salad, and who doesn't enjoy sushi when camping? Not this guy. I enjoy it a lot. So, quite the feast for tonight. Um, and I'll try to keep everything. Yeah, the sushi is, could, have, could have been cared for in a better way, I suppose, but so be it. Um... I don't know if I have that much more to say. Um, uh, it, it's always a slog. The 10 miles from uh, North Bend to here is just, it's, it's a weird, it, go, it goes fast in parts, but it's overall just feels slow. It, it takes precisely the amount of time you think it will. But I guess because it's the end of the day, I'm always like, oh, this is just never ending. And it's true every single time I do it. Um, and I will have to climb out of... The, uh, uh, the area here to get back to Seven Devils tomorrow. And I have to say, I always enjoy the Seven Devils, so I'm really thrilled that as of right now, I'm back on schedule, um, which just is fantastic. It's, uh, it's, it'll be nice to, to do the rest of this. You know, I'm really grateful that, as I said, uh, I believe earlier today, that uh, this all ended up working out. So... Rather than have you enjoy listening to me setting up my tent, perhaps we'll just call it a night here and I'll enjoy my dinner uh, uh, without uh, yapping in your ears uh, anymore. Very successful day four. Bike performed like a champ. Not a, not a whisper of problems. Um, I'm now in a place where it's sort of like if I ran into issues, I have easy rescues. Um, uh, so I, I, I think that... Um, I'm super grateful that everything just ended up working out. So, um, more to come tomorrow. 
early morning. Seven Devils, Bandon. We get some really terrific coast going between here and Port Orford, going into Humbug Mountain, which is another kind of fun uh, um, remote campsite that is really, really good. So really looking forward to all of that for day five, starting tomorrow. But for you next week. And as always, we like to close out the show with a special shout out to the Pedal Shift Society. Because of support from listeners like you, Pedal Shift is a weekly bicycle touring podcast with a global community, expanding into live shows and covering new tours. If you like what you hear, you can support the show for five bucks, two bucks, or even a buck a month. And there's one shot and annual options. If you're not into the small monthly thing, check it all out at pedalshift.net slash society. On to the society. Kimberly Wilson, Caleb Jenkinson, Cameron Lean, Andrew McGregor, Michael Hart, Keith Nagel, Brock Didis, Thomas Skato, Marco Lowe, Terrence Manson, Harry Telgadis, Chris Barron, Mark Van Ram, Brad Hipwell, Mr. T, Nathan Poulton, Stephen Dickerson, Vince LaGreco, Cody Florchinger, Tom Beninati, Greg Braithwaite, Sandy Pizio, Jeff Muster, Seth Pollock, Joseph Quinn, Byron Patterson, Joachim Robber, Ray Jackson, Jeff Fry, Kenny Mikey, Lisa Hart, John Denkler, Steve Henkel, Miguel Quinones, Alejandro Avilas Reyes, Keith Spangler, Greg Towner, Dan Gebhardt, Jody Zoranin, Lucas Barwick, Michael Baker, Brian Bechtal, Reinhardt Bickel, Greg Middlemas, Connie Moore, William Gothman, Brian Benton, Joan Churchill, Mike Bender, Rick Weinberg, Billy Crafton, Gary Matushak, Greg Latois Lopez, James Sloan, Jonathan Dillard, John Funk, Tom Bilch, Ronald Piroli, Dave Roll, Brian Hafner, Misha LeBlanc, Ari Messenger, David Grotke, Wally Estrella, Sue Reinert, John Letko, Stephen Granada, Philip Mueller, Robert Lackey, Dominic Carroll, Jackie McCulloch, John Hickman, Jack Smith, Carl Presso, David Neves, Patty Louise, Terry Fitzgerald, Peter Steinmetz, Timothy Fitzpatrick, Dave Fletcher, James Stratakis, David Neves, Mike Lazuski, Hank O'Donnell, David Zanoni, David Weil, Matthew Sponseller, Chad Reno, Daniel Greger, Spartan Dale, Carolyn Ferguson, Peggy Littlefield, Lauren Allen Smith, Eric Burns, Thomas Pearl, and Darren McKibben. And thanks also to all past and anonymous folks for helping make this show happen. Thank you for joining. You can find Pedal Shift at pedalshift.net for more great bicycle touring content. You can hear the Pedal Shift Project through Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast app. Opening music courtesy of Jason Kent off his self-titled album. The track is called America. Check out his band Sunfield's latest release, Mono Mono, wherever cool music is available.